Yo, 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 welcome back to the Get Into The Bag podcast. I go by Polo Show. I'm a rapper and entrepreneur based here in the YYC, and I'm with a guest today. I'm Paxton. I'm a city planner, hip-hop music aficionado, and, uh, you know, 3D modeler and designer. Yeah, yeah. And um, I got Pax today for a special occasion. Um, you know, we're, we're here to talk about a, a new album release. Um. I know you're ahead just like me and I want to get, you know, I want to be able to have a good conversation about this, this album. Is it good? Is it bad? We'll see. Like, let's see. Um, and yeah, the album in question is Drake's For All the Dogs. For All the Dogs, baby. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Love All it. right. Yeah. So I guess let's just start like overall vibe of the of the album just like how do you feel about it and then we will get into dissecting tracks yeah um i mean i'm still i'm still listening to it i think with most music it takes time to grow on you but uh after my first couple listens front to back i did like the album thought it was a good project i thought it was uh, more of a solid effort than say the past few ones he's let out. Like, um, even I got, I think I liked it more than CLB. I liked it more than her loss. I think I liked it more than honestly, never mind. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm impressed, Ben. I think when we, you know, when he first announced it and it was this, you know, for all the dogs, like that title, I was kind of like, I don't know, let's see what happens. But, uh, then he dropped 8 a.m. in Charlotte and I was like, okay, yeah, this is some vintage Drake right here. Mm-hmm. The thing about us is that we're old enough to you know have seen drake really come up right not just the take care era but the thank me later era and the comeback season and the mixtapes and and seeing drake really you know come from there and i feel like yeah when i listened to 8 a.m in charlotte that gave me that vintage drake vibes and and that was the best precursor possible to this album because then going into it i was very excited and uh yeah i mean there's some great tracks on it for sure yeah yeah, I guess I feel the same way. You know, I, I feel like it's not a, it's not Drake's best album, but mm-hmm. like, I feel like it's his best album since Scorpion. Exactly. You know, yeah. Like yeah. And it's like, it's been back to back. Like CLB was, this is definitely way better than CLB. This Absolutely. is definitely like more material than, um, her loss and just, and all of the pre, all of the pre albums. But yeah, I feel like this. This was strong, you know, ultimately in, in the areas that it could be strong, I feel like it lacked in, in depth in certain areas. And that's why it's, I wouldn't put this in like his top three albums. Sure. Yeah. Um, Definitely not top three. No, no but, exactly. Well, I but, don't know. You yeah. know, the crazy thing is like with Drake, right? Um, I don't know if you saw when he did the Rap Radar interview and he talked about his own favorite album, right? Mm-hmm. At that time. And it was, nothing was the same. He said yeah. that was his most comprehensive album. And, you know, if I ever came across someone who lived under a rock and said, I had never heard Drake in my life, I probably would play them. Nothing was the same. and be like, this is the introduction to this artist, right? Um, I think that's, in my opinion, that's his best album, front to back. Um, but the other day when I was looking at Drake's discography, And I was thinking back to, you know, nothing was the same. And then I paused and I looked at, you know, what came before nothing was the same and what came afterwards. I realized that since nothing was the same, Drake has dropped like, I want to say like six or seven albums since then, right? Like it's, it's like a lot of work that he's, and it's almost like, like, I think nothing was the same was like, what, three or four albums in. And, and since then he's actually delivered more projects since then. And so it's almost like, two separate eras of drake almost Mm. like they're completely different at this point where some of my favorite tracks by drake are like tracks that you know maybe the younger younger generation like the younger gen z kids they don't really even know or they don't even think about you know because for them they're thinking more about like jimmy crooks and things like that you know what i mean like yeah just no or new his newer stuff really but Mm. i agree i think it was uh I think it was his best work since Scorpion, absolutely. And, it's, and I like Scorpion, too. And there, there's some great tracks. And don't get me wrong, like CLB and Honestly Nevermind and, and Her Loss, there were some a few hits here and there mixed within. But overall, as comprehensive projects, I wasn't loving them as much. Yeah. And this seemed almost like a return to form for Drake, at least in my opinion. Yeah. I feel like where this album lacked for me, Yeah, if we're going to talk like negatives now, mm-hmm is content okay you know i feel like all you take away from this album is you know drake is living this playboy life and he has a kid 
you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's really the summary of this album as far as content. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, some of the themes are consistent in Drake's life. Like it's, it's, you know, women loss, but kind of being single, living this rich playboy lifestyle. I'm at the top of the rap game. I mean, you got to give it to Drake. I mean, he's been at the top of the rap game I, for I years. I feel that, you know what I mean? I get, he's had, I, get, I think he's had more longevity than any rapper in history no, at this point. It's true. It's very true. Like in history, like this is insane. Like it, like to really think about it again in, in 2012 he, i wouldn't have if you told me like in 2023 coming up to 2024 now that drake is still the king of the rap game and and unquestionably so like selling more albums than any other rapper streaming more than any other rapper i would have been like there's no way like there had to have been someone new to come up to challenge that or to take that away from him but um you know he's just been able to to sort of maintain that status on top and i think I think a big reason why that is, is because, you know, um, he's just so down to collaborate with the young generation. He's so down to mix it in. And somebody, I think it was Anthony Vantano who said that the reason that potentially could be is because that when Drake was coming up, he wasn't really embraced by his peers. You know, mm -hmm. he wasn't embraced by the Joe Buttons and the Kanye Wests. And he wasn't really like immediately accepted with the other rappers at the time. And so he said, OK, well, if I'm not going to be accepted by my own peers, I'm going to go to the people who are accepting me, which was the younger generation. It was like us and then even younger. You know what I mean? Those are the people that are really liking Drake and, and pushing him up. And again, his willingness to kind of because I mean, Drake is like 36 now. Right. So he's older for sure. But he's getting in there with like the youngest up and comers. You know what I mean? Like people that are uh to maybe the like the hardcore rap people or the people who are really into music will know but maybe for the casual audience that that could be your first time hearing this person is on a drake album honestly and uh i feel like i feel like that's that's a key element in this new album yeah is his ability to kind of mix it in with these younger people okay do you have any any drawbacks from this album Okay, well, to be fair, it's like 20, what, it's 22, 23 songs mm -hmm. total. Um, that's a lot of music. And so, you know, I don't love when projects get to that 20 plus song range because at a certain point, especially when you're listening to the album front to back, it's it almost becomes like a chore sometimes to finish it. We're like, oh my God, like I need to take a break yeah, for a second yeah. or like, because it's the music at this point is like over an hour long, right? It's yeah. it's almost like a it's like the length of like a movie almost, but like for music, right? Um, and then... It has like the pros and cons of a really long album are that like sometimes the what you will you consider like filler tracks of mm. which on this album there are many filler tracks that just kind of are like okay I listened to that it was all right but I'm never gonna go back to that Th those are sort of the drawbacks of a longer album but then I guess on the flip side the positive is that the ones that really stand out really stand out and make you mm. go oh wait a second I need to listen to that again were there any songs like that for you where you paused and you were like I need to listen to that song again immediately. <sighs> definitely the j cole feature it's the best song on the album in my yeah. <laughs> um, is it a, is it like your favorite song on the album i really like um drew picasso yeah and members only i feel like that was a run in that album where those two songs happen and then there's another song right after um but yeah the, even the run before first person shooter yeah with daylight up here daylight yep mm-hmm and what's supposed to track before daylight uh fear of heights yeah and those like yeah. that's that's a that's a run too mm -hmm. i was like you know what i mean and it's like a moment of oh shit this, they're way here and then then you know you get into some more like okay yeah it's kind of like that yeah you know but the truth is since scorpion the double disc effort it's been too many songs that yo this could have been a great album if you just cut it down to this i was about to say that do you, know, you think like, like so yeah again the album is like yeah it's 23 songs total do you think if you maybe had cut it down to like 12 it could have been like maybe a, a top five or top four even drake album because i think so honestly if he had cut out a few filler tracks i think so i think it's possible yeah i think we're in this streaming era where it's just more lucrative to put out more songs at mm -hmm. once because if if a million people listen to your 10 song album, it's mm -hmm. not going to be as much as a million people listening to your 23 song album. I see what you mean. So you, you know think I mean? the, it's, the it's long album, so that's why, like, it's like, a, that's, it's, that's why people are dropping deluxe albums as mm -hmm. well. Like, just keep them listening to the same, like, yeah. you know what I mean? The longer it is, the longer you have to like commit. And it's, it's every 30 seconds you listen is a stream. Yeah. Okay. Right. So yeah, they want you to, they want you to listen for longer. The more so, songs, the more they can hook you. So it's playing to the algorithm essentially is what you're saying. It's ultimately what it is. It's like, okay. it's why everybody's album is 
is super long. It's, it's become a trend now. It's, it's few that are doing the whole, like, let's concise it and just mm-hmm. put out an actual album. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like for the, for the magnitude of artists that Drake is, is at, like, as far as status, like, it had to kind of be this way. Like, he doesn't drop, uh, when was the last album? He, I guess he dropped uh, Her Loss with 21 Savage. When was the last solo album? Um, I guess that would have been, honestly, never mind, right? The one right before. That would have been, uh, yeah, Her Loss and then Honestly, Never Mind. So Honestly, Never Mind was also in 2022. This is what I'm saying. Like, Drake has been consistently dropping almost like, if you look at it since nothing was the same, it's almost an album every year or every other year he's been dropping. And that's part of the relevancy aspect that we were talking about. Yeah. But yeah, I I agree with you. I think if he had cut it down, it would be a better album. Mm. But yeah, this is this is the album we got. Um, so yeah, what are your what are some of your favorite tracks off this album? Yeah, I'm just looking at it right now. Uh, first person shooter is definitely like my favorite. Absolutely. Uh, I actually really like Daylight quite a bit. Yeah, Daylight's um, crazy. I think 21 Savage's verse on Calling for You was a flop. I think that was a very weak verse from him. I'm not the biggest 21 fan of all time, but I will say he has certain verses on certain songs that he has uh like he's elevated the tracks that wasn't one of them um you know what i okay we're gonna talk about this song so rich baby daddy with sexy red <laughs> says uh here's the thing man i actually really liked that song except for sexy red and what initially, like most of the song <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> well i liked the beat a lot and i liked drake's verse and i really liked SZA on that track yeah. too because she's great man uh but ah oh, man as soon as like as soon as uh sexy red came in with that chorus she i just three hooks and a verse how how can you even listen to that song without listening Bro, to- <laughs> I, I i was listening to it in the car today and i just it's almost like you do this thing where you like turn the volume down for a little bit and then you like turn it back up when she's gone and then you turn it back down and you turn, no. turn it, I don't know, bro. I, I think someone needs to release like some sort of like edited version where she's off that because it's it's not good. It's not. No, I mean, that's just I remember the first time I actually did hear it and she spat that chorus. I immediately just took my headphones. And I was like, I've had enough of this. All right. Let me you know, <laughs> let me just come back to this in a second. Yo, um, she's speaking to people like this, you know, people like that. She's up right now. I, yo, I, I think the song is dope. I think the song works. OK, I can see that song being played in strip clubs. Yeah. And it's like, you I'm know sure. what I mean? Yeah. The bar shit I want to hear is not going to play in strip clubs. Fair enough. And it's like, you know, you're making what, music for yeah, a marketplace. What's, yeah. What's the, what's the line? It's like, you listen to music that scares the hose away or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so it's like, that's how I see it. Like, yeah. I think the song works. It's not a song I'm bumping, but like, I, I understand. Yeah. The song. I understand why SZA is on the song. Like, yo, girls are going to bump that track. Yeah. Like, it's, Fair. it's a whole marketing thing. But yeah, I, it's not, it's one of those songs where if we, if we were gonna cut this album down, like yeah, we're like yeah, we can. <laughs> well, the crazy thing is, I think without "Sexy Red," I think that song is great. I think it's really good. So that's down. Um, I think also Drake has one song. He has one song with Bad Bunny, and that's uh, oh, yeah. gently. Um, here's the thing, man. Drake speaking Spanish. As someone who is you know half Latino, I speak Spanish, and I listen to some Latin music sometimes. Um. Drake's Spanish accent hits and misses sometimes. Man. Sometimes yeah. it's great and it works really well. Um, you know, on that track Mia with him and Bad Bunny, it's like a, a smash hit. Uh, yeah, I like it there. On this one, maybe not so much. I think it's just it just doesn't work on this one specifically. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I'll always say, though, if an artist does try to speak Spanish and they don't speak it, you know, kudos for you to be trying. Like, I, I'll respect it, you know, but in this case, that's a skip for me. So that'll be one that I skip. Yeah, that was um, a skip for me, too. I was like, yeah, damn. I tried. I was like, damn. I seen someone say, like, yo, like. If you want to do a feature with Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny has to send you a, f- a fire record for you to hop on and not, it sounds like Drake did this whole Spanish record and said, Bad Bunny, hop on this. And it's even Bad Bunny was like, yo, you sure? Yeah, 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 that's fair. That's that's fair. Um, 8 a.m. in Charlotte, we already talked about it, but that's that's probably my number two. Uh, Just very hard, very great. Uh, I actually really liked Members Only with Party Next Door as well. That was really good too. And um, I don't give a fuck with Yeet. Uh, I'm actually not the biggest fan of Yeet, but that song, I think because... It, it got stuck in my head. I'll admit it because of TikTok. That's all over TikTok right now. That that one where, you know, it's Yeet rapping and then it cuts into Drake saying money for fun. Like that little snippet is all over TikTok right now. And so that did get stuck in my head. I think when I initially listened to the album, I didn't like that song as much. 
And so maybe this is kind of like a bias that's coming out of me because I have heard that sound on TikTok so much and it's just been played over and over in my head. And now I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm down for that track. Yeah. But those are some of the ones I really like. How about yourself? Um, yeah, like I feel like um Fear of Heights, yeah. Daylight, a first person shooter, Drew Picasso, members only, um, eight AM in Charlotte. Um yeah, a lot of a lot of it. I don't know how I felt about that outro track. I don't know, hidden miss track for me, but yeah, I don't know. Those are the ones I'm listening to. Those are the ones I'm going back to when I'm listening to it. Yeah. And but overall, I do feel like it is probably yeah, like like you said, it's the most cohesive project Drake has given us like since Scorpion. And honestly, Scorpion was like frowned upon or like everyone's like yo, people were, like this is a miss, but like in hindsight, like. It really did have like hit songs. Yeah, like, God's plan. That's his biggest track. Exactly. Right? That's like, the biggest track he's big, ever dropped. Exactly. And that's, that was on Scorpion. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, so yeah. but yeah. So I, I like that album a lot, actually. Like I go back to it and it's like I actually enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. What's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so like out of ten, what are you giving it? What are you giving <laughs> Man, I don't know if I like to do ratings, but maybe like a seven. Yeah, I'd say so, like seven and a half, seven. Yeah, it's about right. Yeah. I will say, though, like, I think First Person Shooter, that's going to be on my uh, rotation for probably the rest of the year and into next year as well. Yeah. Um, that's just such a banger. Just Trizzy and J. Cole at the top of their game, just going back and forth. And and I love that. I love J. Cole. Like, he's a great rapper. So, um, yeah, I really like that track. It's good stuff. Yeah, so we've been waiting for that. I mean, they have they've they have done features before. Absolutely, but yeah, but this no. was like a <laughs> next level. Yeah, this is awesome, like rapper shit. Yeah, and I love that that line of uh, you know, it's like the Super Bowl, but we're doing it in the studio or something like that. Like it's just yeah, it's just they're at the top, and it's just two goats talking back to each other. So good stuff. Yeah, no fire. Um, yeah, another thing I wanted to talk to you about was I guess the current state of hip hop. Um. Or where do you think this is going um, as far as music? We kind of just touched on it. You're like, yo, Drake is still on top of the game. But yes. like, yo, what is the current state of hip hop? Who, who are the people? Let's start with this. Who are the people that are top five in the game outside of Drake that are the, you know what I mean? Like the guys that are like the new wave. If you had to point them out and say, okay, and like what you know what i mean like because that is the start of the conversation like what is the current state of the game where so are we is, going this is the problem and this is something i've thought about um a lot kind of recently on my mind is um so you know obviously you know like the xxl freshman lists and all yeah. that stuff and there's kind of a general consensus that those lists have been uh worse and worse each year with the coming years and it's the rappers true. that are on the lists are worse right and I think specifically there was a period from maybe about 2011 to 2014 where those lists were insane. Like you had like Meek Mill, Kendrick Lamar on the same list, um, Mac Miller, Wiz Khalifa, Big Crit, ASAP Rocky, ASAP Fur, Schoolboy Q, J Rock, Absol, um, like just to name a few, you know, J. Cole. Like these guys were all, it was like just this brief period of like, three to four years almost between like yeah like 2011 to 2014 um where they were just insane like just every rapper on the xxl list was like a 10 out of 10 and those guys have still carried the genre moving forward like 10 years later a lot of them uh end up being at the top of the game some of them didn't make it obviously like rest in peace to mac miller um an incredible artist who you know passed too early but um when i look at at the rappers that came out of that specific uh, era and then you look at like let's say 2015 to 2020 the quality of rappers that were coming out there are some notable exceptions you know sure 21 savage um, maybe like a juice world you know like an anderson Pac. like those guys were featured later on on those xxl lists at that time but nowhere near as dense and as filling as it was for those years and specifically for me and maybe it's just because i'm biased because you know the, we were in high school at that time and we were just kind of starting out university and we were a little bit like younger and so i'm sure we'll have a bit of a bias towards then but also like the sound was very different the era was different like these rappers were collaborating with each other like no other like think about like fucking problems with like literally asap rocky drake kendrick um all on a track together like that just would not happen today you know what i mean um 
another big rapper that came out of that era was Joey Badass, who I really like as well, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, when I compare them to, like you just said, okay, who are the, who are the top five uh, biggest rappers right now? I'm sure, like, Lil Baby is probably up there, um, but I actually don't like his music as much. Not saying he's a bad rapper, or maybe I'm just saying it's not for me as much, but, um, like, I don't put Lil Baby on the same level as I would a J. Cole. I don't know. Would you? No. no. So so that's kind of interesting because he is kind of pulling it down, right? Now, Travis Scott, he also would probably be up there outside of Drake. He probably, like, commercially, he's successful rappers. I am tr failing to remember on what XXL list he popped on, but I know days before Rodeo and Rodeo itself was kind of in that 20, like, 2013, 2014. Is that kind of when Rodeo was popping off? It's not Birds, right. Birds in the Trap was like 2016, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. Around then. So I, I even group Travis Scott in with that group as well. Like I throw him in there with the J. Coles, the ASAP Rockies, the Joey Badasses, the Meek Mills, the Wiz Khalifas, the Mac Millers, like of that era. Um, even though maybe like he obviously did a lot of work with Kanye on Yeezus as well. He was, you know, really before he became on as a rapper, he was on his production game helping out. Um and so I don't know. Like I, I just think about the these new guys who are popping up. Look at DeBaby, for example. You know, DeBaby recently had the game unlocked and then he came, he like went as fast as he came. It was crazy. He was like up and then he was <laughs> gone. Like, yeah, bro. Like, it yeah. was like he was he said one wrong thing on stage and he was out. And yeah. to be fair, like <laughs> yeah, he like, wasn't good. Like I never liked him. My friends always would joke with me, like Jaden and stuff. They'd be like, I'd be like, I don't like rappers that have, start with the name Lil or have the name Baby. And my friend would be like, and then they'd be like, Well, you must hate Lil Baby or Dub Baby. Like I these were just not my favorite rappers. But credit to them. They were doing very well. They were, you know, cashing in and commercially they were very successful. I can acknowledge that they did very well for themselves. It just maybe wasn't for me as much, right? So yeah, I mean, right now, top five rappers outside of of you know mainstream, like bigger guys like Drake, yeah, probably Travis Scott's up there, probably Lil Baby. Um, I would say like I don't know. It's weird. Like there's so many rappers who are catching a big wave right now, but I'm not sure how hard that wave extends. Like look at someone like Ice Spice, for example. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not into Ice Spice's music, but she just recently collaborated with Taylor Swift, who became like, a billionaire. Like that's crazy, bro. And that's within what, two years, maybe one year? No, within, like, like when when yeah. did Ice Spice like really start to pop not even off? it's not even been a year. Not even been a year. Like, like yo, that's crazy. Ice Spice is the hottest rapper out of New York right now. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's a fact. That's a fact. You know, I'm not not a great fact, like that, but, but it's a fact. You know what I mean? That's what it is. It's yeah, and and think, but the, so then you know, you get into the idea of like, what's the state of hip hop? Well, in 2002, the hottest rapper coming out of New York was 50 Cent, and yeah. now in 2023, the hottest rapper out of New York is Ice Spice. Now, am I saying Ice Spice is a trash artist? Am I saying she's worse than 50 Cent? I, I'm not saying these things, but I'm just saying like, it's just we're in a very different place. But one of the big things I was thinking about was. You know, like, for example, like rock music, right? Rock mm -hmm. music was very popular, 70s, 80s, 90s, maybe like into the early 2000s until ultimately it ended up getting passed by, um, you know, hip hop as like the main genre that most people listen to, right? Like you'd agree that hip hop is like the main genre of music right now for most people. It's like the most. Yes. Okay. So, you know, when you ask yourself, how did rock lose its chokehold on the music industry, right? I think it really comes down to the fact that the newer rock bands were not even as remotely successful or as interesting and original as the older ones were. Um, Apple Music has changed quite a bit in terms of like its UX and its design. But back in the day, you used to be able to look at like each genre and see like what were the top trending songs for each genre. And if you looked at like the rock music genre, it was literally all music from like the 70s and 80s. But if you looked at rap, it was all like today's music essentially coming out, right? And so I think there's this idea that whatever the genre is, the newer artists have to be better than the old ones and they have to be pushing the genre forward and becoming innovative and keeping it up. And the thing with rock is that, and maybe this is where hip hop is right now, is that like there were times where the sound of rock shifted so hard. So, for example, like a band in the 70s, like, um, I don't know, Boston or something versus like in the 80s, you had this like almost like hard metal, like Metallica or like you had like, you know, heroin music like um, Motley Crue. Like that sound is very different than this other sound that came that was much more easier and easier to listen to in the 70s right so is rap going through that where for example like the trap music genre is so different than the soul sampling genre or even even some of the beats that we saw in the later 2000s like 2009 2010 era like songs like um you know 
uh, like songs that you would hear on like on Drake's uh, earlier albums, right? Like on on Thank Me Later and on Take Care, a song like Headlines, for example, or even like uh, Best I Ever Had, like those beats sonically are so different than what's being made today. And so I think that so- certain people are looking at this and saying, I like this new genre. I like this. And this is what's pushing rap forward. And I'm interested in it. And other people are saying, you know what? I don't like this as much, but maybe it's just a period. Rap still stays on top, but this specific sound and the specific almost like subgenre of rap is now the dominant, you know, form of it for this period of time. And then maybe later it shifts into something else. Cause like rock had, you know, grunge come out in the nineties. Right. And it's like trap has come out recently for hip hop. It's been, I would say probably very dominant as the main subgenre of hip hop that people are listening to. Is there going to be a new sound that comes out of hip hop? Potentially. That's kind of what I'm thinking. That's interesting. Yeah, that's kind of my theory. Yeah, um, I think I feel the same way as well. Um, just about like, yeah, the genre just has to push forward. I feel like as far as like the rap game, I feel like this, like you're right, this this subgenre of rap that is most popular right now is not one that po- like promotes promotes lyricism for the most part. Sure. Yes, that's, absolutely. That's the best way to say it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like as history has shown, like the people who are on top of the rap game are always lyricists. And maybe that's why like, like how has Drake been able to stay on top for so long and no one mm-hmm. is challenging it? Like, I think that's part of it. Um, and I, I do think like, I like what you said is perfect to me. Like, I do feel like this is what it is, but this is a period where we're just in the period where this is popular. But, you know, whether it's the new sound or we just revert back to what it was before, I doubt it would be what it was before, but it would be a new sound, Mm -hmm. but it would still be championed by lyricism. And I feel like that's what it's going to take. We're just in a period where this is, it's easy to, it's easy to pump this out, you know, in this, in the, in the climate we're at, as far as the industry um where everything is streaming and that's another thing like the the way music has is consumed has changed yes you know what i mean so that's it's, a big it's, factor it's in not this just too. culture you know what yeah. i mean we're not just like oh the producers have gotten yeah. more like it's more like that's such a big factor into into this and so yeah the my my final um thing i wanted to ask you about was just um what do you think um because i know you have some you know you you're into the music business as well right and mm-hmm. Like, what do you think of the future of, of the music business, um, as far as, as far as artists being on labels or is that, you know what I mean? Or putting out or putting out music, like what do you, you know what I mean? You, you know what I'm asking? Yeah. So tough to say, honestly, because you know, who could have predicted TikTok, right? And and how it, and how it polarized and changed the music industry completely. Like in literally, I mean, we're in 2023. TikTok took over the music industry like during the pandemic, not even three years ago. And it completely shifted how late record labels are approaching music Mm -hmm. because a lot of them now just want like this. They they don't even care if your whole song is good. As long as you've got like some sort of 10 to five second gap in that song that hits on this social media platform. Right. And they're choosing artists like based on, you know, can this artist go viral? And is this going to get a lot of views and stuff like that? It's weird that we live in an era where it's simultaneously easier than ever to promote and make your own music and yet harder to make money off your music. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you saw this like recently, like Spotify just announced they're going to change their royalty structure for uh, artists. And specifically, they're looking at the the bottom tier artists in their platform, the ones that are making, according to them, less than 0.5% of the money on the platform. And they're going to stop paying those people. So they're essentially going to shift uh, the requirements for you to even be able to make money off their platform, right? Now, they're saying that this is a, an effort to get rid of like low tier ambient noise and people who are trying to scam the platform to just make a couple quick bucks or something like that. And mm-hmm. I'm sure that's probably the main reason for this. But again, like you're saying, like if you're a new up and coming artist and you are trying to promote your music on a platform like Spotify, like there's just going to be another layer to get over to even be able to start making some money, right? Mm. That's a tough thing to think about too. Um, yeah, I mean, where, where is it going to go? You know, are, I mean, it's weird again, like independent artists have the most power that they've ever had. And yet it's 
even more difficult for them now, right? I think a lot of that has to do with the monoculture and how we lost that. Because back in the day, everyone was tuned into one thing, and that was the television, right? And so if you had your music video on the TV, you pretty much like, we're going to be popping no matter what. Nowadays, we're all kind of, we all have our own uniquely catered to algorithms and our own uniquely catered to music platforms that are pushing certain things. And the way we discover and hear about artists is completely different. You could bring up a rapper right now that I've never even heard of, but you've been listening to them all month and think like, this is the dopest thing. But you, other people just have no idea who that is because that's just specifically catered to you mm. and it's been delivered to you, right? So um, I, it's, it's so hard to predict where the music industry is going to go. I just hope that like, you know, there's there's still a way for young and up and coming artists to make music and to pursue their dreams. You know what I mean? Because it's it is possible for you know a, a young independent artist to come up and go viral on a platform like TikTok and make a bunch of money and build a career. But it almost seems like it's getting tougher to do than it was initially. Mm. I don't know. Very true. Yeah, I feel it's uh yeah, it's a different it's a different set of rules than it was and it's it's always going to change like you said TikTok it might not even be TikTok next year, right? Yeah. Like it's always it's this dynamic game that you just got to be ready to Yeah. Just got to be ready to play like yeah. yeah. Um but yeah. Thank you, man, cuz yeah, that's a lot of insight. That's a lot of a lot of stuff for even me to think about as an artist. But um yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was a good chat, man. Well, <laughs> thanks for having me on. I love to, you know, just get into these music discussions and just talk about, you know, where the industry's at, where it might be going and things like that, right? It's it's great to have you. So thanks, bro. This was Getting to the Bag podcast episode. I can't remember. Featuring Paxton. I go by Polo Show. You can find me on at Polo Show YYC on all social media platforms. You can find my music on all streaming platforms at Polo Show. Uh, yeah, you can check me out on Instagram at Pax Porter. I've dropped some new uh, 3D renderings. Go check them out. Yeah, yeah. Peace out. <laughs>